Okay, so today we're going to be talking about the two times that the Grim Reaper came knocking at Stevie Crea's door. By May of 1990, the Lucchese bosses Vicar Musso and Gaspipe Castle would learn from a law enforcement source that they were ready to be indicted on the window case. Naturally, both Vic and Gaspipe were not going to wait around to get arrested. So they decided to lamb it and went into hiding. For starters, Al Diaco was given the acting boss position. Several members were falsely labeled as rats. The bosses also had suspicions that the money that was being kicked up was short. But in time, Vic and Gaspipe would take all the acting positions away and create a panel, which consisted of members making day-to-day -day decisions jointly. Although the panel was handling day-to-day -day operations smoothly, there was a disconnect. And this came from the members that were picked to be messengers. Another major problem taking place was Gaspipe's insubordination. The panel would be changed many times, adding to all the chaos. It first consisted of Al Diaco, Frankie Lasterino, and Anthony Boat. He spoke to him about making a move to take over the family. Overall, this power move never took place due to the events that unfolded. The arrest of Vicar Musso on July 28, 1991, had several aftershocks within the family. First and foremost, paranoia was at an all-time high. Immediately, Al Diaco was labeled a rat. Members of the family attempted to hit him at a meeting. Luckily for Diaco, he managed to escape unharmed, which led him right into the arms of the government to begin cooperating. The panel was now reorganized, its members being Frankie Lasterino, Anthony Boat, Sal Avellino, and Stevie Crea. Gaspipe still remained at large, and little did anyone know that he played a role in the capture of Vicar Musso. Paranoia struck the Lucchese family again. The concern was that Neil, being an influential captain, would try to make a move to take over the family. So on April 3rd, 1992, while Neil was sitting in a Long Island restaurant, an attempt was made on his life. Gaspipe's days of running the family as a fugitive came to an end on January 19, 1993. While trying to locate Gaspipe, the FBI began keeping closer tabs on Frankie Lesterino's phone. With this information, they were able to zero in on Gaspipe's location. When he was arrested, one of the items found in his possession was FBI files of the profit sessions. Also in his possession was detailed notes regarding payments and names of members of the family, among other things. After Gaspipe's arrest, the panel was reorganized again. Stevie Crea, Joe Tafiti, and Danny Cateo were added to it. During this time, indictments were looming and the Brooklyn faction had a new concern, Stevie Crea. Also, the fact that he was disgruntled over losing his position proved to them his thirst for control. So the Brooklyn faction all conspired to hit Stevie. I've spoken many times in the past about the distaste that the Brooklyn faction has for the Bronx. When the dust settled, strangely enough, Vicar Musso picked Stevie Crea as the acting boss and later the official underboss of the Lucchese family. During my time, the family's base of power was in the Bronx. By early 2016, two top administration positions were vacant. A year later, word on the street was that a new Lucchese indictment was coming down. In short, a letter was sent out by Vicar Musso approving certain members of the Brooklyn faction to fill these voided positions. Many people mistakenly think that the mob was only about violence. In some cases, this can be true. However, many situations are handled with diplomacy. I've said in the past, violence is always plan B, with diplomacy being plan A. And in this case, had Stevie not taken heed to diplomacy, Thank <laughs> you.